Congratulations on your purchase of a new Briggs & Stratton snow thrower. It's important that you read and follow the operator's manual and all operating instructions when setting up and operating your unit. You'll require the following tools to assemble your new snow thrower. A cloth for checking the oil level. A torque wrench. Pliers. An air gauge. A number two Phillips screwdriver. 10 millimeter and 13 millimeter wrenches and sockets. Begin shoot installation by installing two of the chute retainers. Now slide the chute onto the ring engaging the ring between the chute flange and retainers. Install the remaining retainer. Tighten all retainer bolts and torque them to 2.2 foot-pounds, being careful to not over-tighten the bolts. Check the chute rotation to make sure it isn't binding. Begin installing the lower handle by placing it on the ground. Line up the lower holes on the handle and frame. And install, but do not tighten, the hardware on both sides. Lift the handle to align the upper holes and install the hardware on both sides. Tighten all four bolts with a torque wrench to 12 foot-pounds. To install the upper handle, position it on the ground. Install the traction drive cable by inserting the Z-fitting into the lever hole closest to the nut and rotating the cable until it's fully engaged. Install the auger control cable into the hole closest to the nut in the same way. If necessary, loosen the panel bolts to increase the clearance. Lift the upper handle while holding the cables in place. Attach the left side of the upper handle to the lower handle and attach the right side of the upper handle to the lower handle. Align the holes and install two bolts on the right side of the handle and one bolt on the lower left side. Tighten the bolts with a torque wrench to 6 foot-pounds. Check the tension on both cables. Cables should deflect slightly with moderate finger pressure. If an adjustment is needed, refer to the operator's manual. Begin installing the speed control rod by moving the speed control handle to the left. Attach the upper speed control rod to the bracket. Move the speed control handle to the right. Attach the lower end of the speed control rod and spring to the speed control arm. And fasten the hardware. Note that the rod adjuster is set at the factory. No adjustment is necessary. Begin installing the chute rotation rod 
by removing the handle. Assemble the eye bolt with hardware and the handle on the chute rotation rod. Insert the eye bolt into the handle and fasten it with the hardware. Loosen the hardware at the pivot bracket and insert the end of the chute rotation rod into the pivot bracket while lining up the rod gear with the chute rotation gear. Fasten the end of the rotation rod with the hardware. Tighten the left pivot bracket bolt with a torque wrench to 12 foot-pounds. Then tighten the right pivot bracket bolt to the same torque value. Check that the chute rotates freely. This snow thrower is equipped with two height adjust skids that elevate the front of the snow thrower. Determine how much clearance you want between the scraper bar at the bottom of the auger housing and the ground. If clearing a gravel surface, enough ground clearance is needed to prevent the unit from picking up rocks. Refer to setup instructions for proper skid shoe adjustment by surface type. Check and adjust the tire pressure. The maximum pressure is stamped on the sidewall of the tires. Be sure you do not exceed this pressure. Overinflating tires may cause them to explode, which could result in serious injury. Check the oil level. Refer to your operator's manual for your unit's oil specifications. Place the snow thrower on a level surface and remove the dipstick. Keep the oil level within the operating range. This snow thrower is equipped with several mechanical safety systems designed to keep the operator safe while using the unit. Be sure to test the operation of these systems regularly. If the unit fails to operate as described, do not operate it. See your authorized dealer for service immediately. Begin by testing the auger impeller control. With the engine running, press down on the auger control lever. The auger impeller should rotate. Then release the auger control lever. The auger impeller should stop within five seconds. Now test the traction drive control. With the engine running and speed control in first gear, press down on the traction control lever. The unit should move forward. Now release the traction control lever. The unit should stop if it is operating properly.